You're watching UTV English. We broadcast from the heart of Europe, Ukraine's on the My name is Anna Nichenko. Hello and welcome. The reaction of the world on the performance called the election of Putin of the Russian Federation we will discuss today. So... Putin received 87.28% of the votes during the election performance in Russia. These are record numbers during his tenure. None of his opponents received even 5% of the votes. In addition, the Central Voting Commission reported a record turnout in the elections. More than 77% allegedly voted. The previous record was more than 30 years ago, in 1991. The leaders of North Korea, Iran, China, Venezuela, Cuba and some Russian neighbors congratulated the Kremlin dictator on his victory. At the same time, most political leaders in the world called the elections non-democratic and didn't recognize their results. But it definitely cannot be called an uh, election. It's a, it's a procedure that is supposed to resemble elections. Uh, some might call it a reappointment, lacking any legitimacy. Um, I'm, I'm glad that people uh, outside the confines of a political prison that is called Russia currently are able to express their opinions, such as, for example, Russians that voted in, in Lithuania. Just 3% of those who came to Russian embassy in, in Vilnius voted for, uh, for Vladimir Putin. Others decided either to, uh, to ruin um, the... the the paper, <laughs> or, uh, or or to vote for any other candidate that was uh, that was that was there on, on the ballot. The theme and some hours we will discuss with our guest Vitis Yurkonis, a project director at Freedom House, lecturer at Vilnius University in Institute of International Relations and Political Science. Hello and welcome. Welcome. Glad to see you. What is possible? Was it possible? How do you think that any of the Western leaders would recognize these elections? After all, in fact, these elections are not much different from Zoo that took place in 2019. And what will change in the world uh, in geopolitics now? What do you think? Well, first of all, uh, the mockery, which was there like uh, at the Russian Federation, was even before it started uh, mocked uh, by or trolled, if you will, by the EU leadership, congratulating Vladimir Putin in advance, basically showing the attitude uh, and the difference, actually, in terms of the perception of what was happening in uh, Russia um, these days, this weekend. Obviously, uh, it was a show, uh, and uh, the level of falsification grew. If uh, in the previous years we had um, like the scale of falsifications which went beyond 10 million uh, votes, uh, it's kind of experts agree that this time it was even bigger because it was prolonged for three days because there were like uh, there was the electoral voting procedure initiated by Venediktov and uh, his colleagues, uh, and it was pretty obvious that the falsifications are going to be of a massive scale. Nobody was uh, hiding. Basically, everyone within the opposition, within the liberal, like uh, liberals and Democrats, were basically calling them as fake elections, the show, the theater, the spectacle, whatever. Uh, and, uh, and I think that resembled the overall attitude even prior the Mm, the this so-called performance. And then uh, in terms of the reactions, we've already witnessed a couple of states, uh, EU member states, who mm, stated that we cannot recognize such elections because, of course, like uh, the without independent media presence, without uh, presence of the independent um, uh, competitors of uh, Democrats, not even unable to run, but actually the main competitor, Alexei Navalny, was killed in jail. So, so I mean, what kind of uh, elections are we talking about? Therefore, the attitude is as follows. And one more topic, as Reuters reports, the first visit after election will be to China. Does it mean that China has already chosen the side in this war or what? Well, uh, I don't think it's really a secret uh, that uh, 
Russia, the Kremlin is playing alongside the other authoritarian countries and among the first to congratulate was of course the loyal ally Belarus and uh, Lukashenko's regime. Mm, I mean, the attitude of China maybe is not that blunt and directly, but definitely they are playing on the side of the authoritarian countries. And uh, therefore, I mean, uh, they would, uh, might hide behind all this like de facto ruler, de facto like leader uh, whatsoever. But uh, we don't think, we, we don't doubt that Beijing is going to proceed as it was like few years ago, as it was yesterday, it will continue cooperating. Uh, after all, that's one of the main hubs uh, for Russia to bypass sanctions, to avoid sanctions, to like uh, avoid uh, uh, to conduct business in the like Chinese currency rather than U.S. dollars. So, so I mean, many aspects why this partnership is of uh, essential importance for Kremlin, and of course, uh, China is benefiting and is increasing their like um, presence and their power in the global arena. Mm -hmm. because of that. A very important thing. On one hand, Russians are um, afraid to vote not for Putin inside the country. But on the other hand, it was Putin who won in the majority of foreign precincts. For example, in Estonia, the dictator gets 75 percent. Mm, why do you think and how should countries now react if there are so many people living inside them who support the dictator and the bloody war in Ukraine? Well, first of all, I would be very cautious with the conclusions of that kind, uh, how many actually people voted. If you look to the um, uh, official ballot, uh, like official uh, documents um, in Vilnius, for instance, in Lithuania, uh, there was like 3% voting for Vladimir um, Putin. And, uh, the exit polls were indicating 3% of the vote, uh, voting regarding uh, Vladimir Putin. The official ballot was uh, showing that Vladimir Putin came second in the, um, uh, according to official data, and the highest percent of the protest votes, the ruined ballots, was in Lithuania again. But, uh, I mean, but I wouldn't uh, draw like uh, big uh, conclusions out of that because we know that the elections were falsified. We know that the um, Kremlin was trying to manipulate the data. Um, obviously, we also know that there are in certain countries there are supporters of like Putin, and if uh, like uh, and some of them live even further from Eastern Europe in in France, for instance, right? So so, uh, but. At the same time, if uh, you watch the action initiated by the democratic opposition, like um, going out to the embassy and voting during the midday, uh, the um, Russian embassy in Moscow tried to portray as if the queues nearby the embassy were the support to the electoral process. But then uh, Yulia Navalny was going there, like, uh, and the uh, crowd was chanting in support of her in uh, against the war as, as well it was pretty obvious that all those people who gathered were uh, with the anti kremlin and anti war moods so no matter what the kremlin is trying to portray and to manipulate the reality is different and i think uh, that's the main conclusion out of the entire circus that was uh, there on the weekend that uh, the public support, uh, no matter how hard Kremlin uh, is trying, is decreasing, and uh, that the attitude, not only abroad, uh, which is obvious because a lot of people fled because of the repressions, but also inside the country are not that great and certainly do not correspond to the numbers that Kremlin wanted to portray, 80%. That's insane. I don't think that even people in the Kremlin believe these kind of numbers. And I have one more question. Some experts are calling this election Putin's last election. Your opinion and what will happen in 2030? What do you think? 
Well, there were also some jokes running around, right, that uh, Vladimir Putin was increasing his uh, public writing, the numbers, like of his support um, by each year, increasing 12 percent. So, I mean, if we talk about the upcoming elections, he still has this 12 percent left for him to reach 100. But talking seriously, of course, there's a mismatch, like uh, the growing mismatch in terms of the uh, reality and uh, what the Kremlin is portraying. And inevitably, that is going to be not sustainable. That would uh, cause uh, tensions inside the system as well, because the police, the uh, Electoral uh, Commission, the Kremlin folks, they understand that this support is not there, which means that uh, like Vladimir Putin is vulnerable. And uh, I think this uh, is basically indicating to the fact that this might have been the last performance, the last show, and uh, the end is near. Thanks a lot for your answers and thanks that you joined us today. I remind to our viewers that my guest was Vidis Yurkon, is a project director at Freedom House and lecturer at Vilnius University in Institute of International Relations and Political Science. So it was UAV English from the heart of Europe. Thanks for your support and see you.